Hi friend, Niklas here. Welcome to another episode of the Your Audio Solutions podcast, where it's my mission to find the tools and methods from the people that inspire you, so you can apply their knowledge to your own life and work. And on the show today, we have a musician and vocalist, Mike Mattison. You might know him from the band the Tedeschi, or actually, first of all, the, the Derek Trucks band, but most more recently, the Tedeschi Trucks band, uh, who I must say is probably the best band in the world right now. I mean, that band is monstrous. They have, I mean, they have Derek Trucks <laughs> playing guitar. What else can you ask for? Um, two drummers, I mean, a massive 12-piece band. Uh, Susan Tedeschi is such a great vocalist uh, too and obviously Mike um, plays with them, sings with them, backing vocals and some lead vocals too I guess. He also plays guitar sometimes I believe. Um, and a fun side note or side fact, maybe you're aware of this already, but uh, Mike is actually the, the writer behind one of the Tedeschi Trucks band's most popular songs, uh, Midnight in Harlem. Uh, I didn't know that before the interviews. That was that's that's pretty cool actually, um, and they actually swap songs a bit, which I find pretty cool. Um, so I believe their trucks uh, has has um, have some writing credits on on Mike's new solo album. He wrote some car. Uh, he wrote a piece of music, and then then Mike used it for his own solo album, which I found pretty cool. So they're sort of swapping uh, songs around. It was a huge pleasure talking to Mike, and I hope you're going to enjoy this conversation too. Uh, just a quick side note about the, the recording, if you're watching this video. The Skype recorder was a bit fucked up at this point, uh, so the quality is a bit low. Uh, but it sounds good, you can see what's going on. Uh, but just a quick side note about that, if you're wondering when the quality is a bit low. And also, before we get into uh, this interview, I do want to take this opportunity to acknowledge and pay respect to the um, late Al Schmidt. Uh, I believe he passed away last week. And if you're not familiar with uh, Al Schmidt or who he was, he's he's probably the, 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 the biggest sound engineer we had. I mean, he had 21 Grammy Awards. He, he even has, uh, I believe he's the only sound engineer who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, uh, so a huge figure in the music business, in the music community, for sound engineers like myself, and if you're a sound engineer, a recording and mixing engineer, I'm sure you, you know who Al Schmidt was, I mean, yeah, he was the biggest we had, and I think um, we owe him a lot um, of where the industry is, how we record, how we mix, and and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, he worked with 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 artists like. Let me just read a, a list I made. He worked with artists like Frank Sinatra, Neil Young, Steely Dan, Toto, Quincy Jones, Natalie Cole, Sam Cooke, and the list goes on and on. I mean, he was a huge, huge figure in the music business. And yeah, I just want to take this op opportunity to pay my respect and. Uh, sad to see him go. I'm glad he lived as long as he did. I hope he didn't pass away of any illness. I don't know how he passed away, but um, yeah, sad to see him go. We owe him a lot. So I just want to say thank you, Al Schmidt, for all the stuff you did. Um, and go listen to some of his recordings. They were great. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Al Schmidt. All right. Um, on a happier note, let's get into the interview with Mike Mattison. And I hope you're going to enjoy this conversation as much as I did. So please enjoy. Awesome, man. But yeah, Mike, first of all, I really appreciate you taking your time. Oh, my pleasure. Where are you now, by the way? Are you also in Florida? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're doing some recording down in Florida. Ah, right, cool. With your own band or? Uh, with the Tedeschi Trucks band. Cool. Is this something yeah. you can talk more about, or that's a secret? Uh, not really. It's just a. Uh, we've been working on an album for a couple months, and uh, and we're finally in the. Or we've been writing for a couple months, and we're finally in the recording phase. Nice. Yeah. And do you, do you guys record that at uh, Derek's home? I don't know if you call it a home studio, but it's in their property, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. So it looks we, pretty badass. It's it's very nice. Yep. Yeah. We're, we're lucky. 
nice. Very nice, man. I mean, that's something I want to get in, get in with you later on, uh, and like how you guys work. Because, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, I understand you you also contribute to to the the songwriting and for your own stuff. For example, like on Afterglow, is does has Derek contributed some songs to you, or how how does that whole relationship work? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, we, we, you know, I, I'm kind of lucky because I have different venues for material that I come up with. So if, if I think something will work for the Tedeschi Trucks band, I'll present it and see if people bite. Uh, but if they don't, I can just do it by myself or uh, I could do it with scrap o -matic. Um, So nothing ever gets wasted. You know, uh, there's there's always a home. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, the, the thing you're working on now with the new record, how involved are you in, in writing songs for that? Like, how, how do you do it? Uh, pretty involved. You know, th this one's a little different because we started during the pandemic. So um, we started kind of conceiving of things uh, long distance, just kind of trying to talk out what we wanted to to say and and, and write about and uh and then we kind of everybody kind of contributed from afar until we were able to get together uh last summer and then a little bit in the fall and winter as well too so um it, it, this one is a little more intentional that way um uh, oftentimes things happen a little more spontaneously but we kind of had to plan it out just to make sure everybody was you know because we couldn't be together basically so yeah yeah also it was a lot of sending files back and forth a lot of that yeah <laughs> <laughs> how was that experience then uh it, you know it's good it's just a different way of working and uh it, it you know it kind of got us out of our comfort zone uh and and you have to be very intentional about it and you have to kind of you, you can't when you're not together, it, you, you have to be very direct. Uh, you can't kind of just have things happen spontaneously, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was it was fun. It was good. It was a good exercise. Nice. And I mean, uh, I've been very fortunate to see you guys twice, actually. Uh, oh. Me and my fiance in 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 London. Okay. Uh, I think I think the first one, I think it was 2019. Might be wrong, but you guys play like London Palladium. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm, year and sure. date. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that sounds right. That sounds 19 ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pre pandemic, at least. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And then we saw you um, at Wembley. Uh, is that called a stadium? It's not the arena. It's a stadium, right? That's what it's called. Yeah. It's the arena, I think, not the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the, the theater, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to another guy called Michael um, Palma Palmasino, Palmasano, maybe you pronounce it, yesterday. Uh, we were just both saying how oh, you guys are probably the best band out there, you know, in the world oh. right now, because it's... That's very kind of you to say. It's incredible, man. Yeah, yeah, No, but it's such a... It's like, first of all, like, having a band like like the Tedeschi Trucks band, um, it's awesome to see that you have the audience to fill out these arenas and people actually want to come and see this music live. It's, it's badass. We're very, we're very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. We've been, been working at it a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, how did you first get involved with um, Derek? Did, is it true that you met on a subway? I read that somewhere. That is true. Yeah. We, um, he, uh, his singer left their band to do his own solo stuff and uh, a couple different people recommended me to, to Derek when he was in New York. Um, and he got the CD of my band, scrap o -Matic, um, delivered to his hotel room. But it was from two different people who didn't know each other. So he's like, that's an interesting coincidence. And, uh, and then he recognized me. I was leaving work. I worked in Manhattan at the time. And I had a very large afro. And he thought he recognized me on the subway. So he's like, hey, are you Mike Madison? I was like, yeah, who are you? And uh, we had a kind of interesting chat because most often people don't talk to you on the subway. But yeah. um, but uh, and he's like, yeah, I, I, he's like, I got your record. We should play sometime. I was like, sure. <laughs> so it kind of right. took took off from there. Yeah. Or was that when you joined or you guys started like the Derek Trucks band? Was that the Derek started? Trucks band? Yeah, that was 2002, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing. Um, uh, your record uh, live from Georgia, I think it is, right? It's like the live record. Georgia uh, Theater, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a again kick-ass record. I mean, you guys are on fire as always. 
Oh, thank you. That was that was fun. That was a that was a great iteration of the band. There was uh, when Kofi was still with us and Rico Scott and Todd Smalley. Yeah, they were badasses. Who was Rico? Ben? And I, I'm, I'm familiar with with um, uh, Kofi. Did he passed away, didn't he? Or? Kofi passed away a couple of years ago. Yep, yeah. and uh, R- Rico did too. Actually, sadly, uh, last year. But uh, he was the drummer for the Derek Trucks band for many many years. Rico Scott, amazing right. drummer. Yeah. Right. I need to check check him out more properly then. Yeah. Some missed that somehow. Right. Um, but I saw a kind of um, uh, I don't know if it uh, if it's a quote, but I heard you talk about like writing melodies and stuff, and um, I believe it was you, you attributed this to Kofi. It was like he was really good at uh, writing melodies. Like you said, like it feels like you've heard it before, but yeah. you can't really place it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was good like that. He could just come up with classic melodies. I think part of it was that he was just so steeped in all different kinds of music. I mean, he was classically trained flautist, um, and so he knew the whole classical canon repertoire. uh, But he was also knew everything about jazz, and he he just he just he knew everything. So he could just kind of come up with these things. It, it, It was a unique talent. He was he was especially good at what he did <laughs> nice. but what's your approach to to writing melodies for your own or like any music doesn't matter if it's your own or for the, the disco trucks band uh you know i don't know i just it, things just kind of occur to me I'm, I'm not real disciplined like i don't sit down and try to make things i just if, if something comes to me i'll follow up and, and stick with it and, and, until i finish it but i'm, I'm not real I'm not a real workhorse, you know, (laughs) Uh, but and and then, like I say, I'm lucky because I I can kind of if I if I craft anything, it can go anywhere. So if it doesn't go to the Tedeschi Trucks Band, it can go to Scrapomatic or I can just do it myself. So so it's it's a it's a luxurious space to be in. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. But so. You have also the Tedeschi Trucks band, Scraptomatic, but then you then you have your solo stuff too. Or is that also? Oops, I lost you there for a second. I am oh, back. sorry. I, 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 now you're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just um, say it again. So, yeah, you have you're in the Tedeschi Trucks band. You have mm-hmm. Scraptomatic, but then you also have your own solo band. Is that the three projects you you balance or? Yeah, those those are the three basically. And really, when I do my solo stuff, it's just the Scrapomatic guys play on it um but uh you know i just it, it tends to be just my material that didn't quite make it to that space scrapmatic space i guess so nice. yeah yeah because i was listening to your afterglow record and that's your solar record and that's mm-hmm. a terrific record man we really uh, enjoyed it. oh thank you thanks thank you yeah, yeah. We, we were lucky we got a uh, jason kingsland is a is a great engineer and and mixer and he he uh is really responsible for kind of the the sonic the, the aural quality of that he, he did a great job all right nice and so i mean again that's was afterglow uh, like a song that derek helped you you write in, in that case and uh that's interesting yeah he that, that he kind of had these chords that he was playing one day and i kind of came up with a, a the chorus over it i don't know but i've been told New York City's mighty cold, and um, and then we just didn't finish it up. It just kind of didn't go anywhere, and uh, it, but it stuck with me. So I just kind of took it myself and and finished it off. Um, and he was, you know, nice enough to give me permission to use it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's that's how stuff happens. It's just kind of uh, happy accidents, oftentimes. Yeah, perfect. I mean, and then you wrote Midnight, Midnight in Harlem. That's your song, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Right. And that was that was written way back in the um, in the Derek Trucks Band days, like early early two thousands. And uh, we actually p- toyed with it a couple times, and it just kind of never happened. And then when uh, Derek and Susan combined bands, we kind of gave it another shot, um, and it seemed to work. So you know, so, songs kind of take on a life of their own sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But how was the experience when you guys had the Derek Trucks Band? decided to go oh let's join forces and create this monstrous band (laughs) (laughs) uh it was interesting because um you know there are a lot of personalities and the and they uh you know it it wasn't 
a super smooth transition, uh, but it, it took us a while like, to to kind of get up and and moving. But uh, but everybody was so good, so talented. It, it just kind of it, it it coalesced, you know. But um, yeah, it was it was an interesting time, and and you know the, I don't think they really knew what it was going to be like either. Uh, getting you know eleven, twelve people on stage like it takes it takes time to get to get momentum and and to yeah. to get comfortable. But yeah. How is it even being in a tour with with that band? Because I mean, how big is the crew? You, I mean, you must have trucks of all the like B. What's it called? The organ B. What's it the organ called again? B B B three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, all that. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> there's there's a there's a truck, and usually there's about two buses, and um, you know, like I said, there's twelve in the band, and there's probably seven or eight crew people. So it's a big, it's an unwieldy crowd but we, but we get it done thank thankfully everybody's like humane <laughs> we are we all get along so we, we do have yeah. a good time yeah it's it's awesome but how does it work when when like when you're writing this new album obviously because you have so many instruments or a lot of people like the two drummers for example mm-hmm. does everyone bring their uh part in or is like do you go like oh hey can you play like this and or <laughs> Do you allow people to contribute? That's a good question. Yeah, no, it, it, it's pretty open. Um, th- there tends to be more kind of like a core group of folks who who do a lot of the writing. Um, but you know, when it comes to putting together like background parts uh, between Alicia Shakur and Mark Rivers and I, you know, it's that's everybody has input, and, and uh, you know, kind of the best idea wins. It's the same thing with um, with the horn section as well. Um, you know, it's it's very collaborative. In that way, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So it's no dictatorship ish. No, no, it's not very top down. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's bottom up. <laughs> that's good, man. Yeah, yeah. And do you guys record your albums live, or how 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 do you approach that aspect? Uh well, you know, we're lucky because, like, do you say Derek does have a studio, so we're not. Mm-hmm. You know, oftentimes when you're recording an album, it's like the the meter's running and you have to get things done. Uh, and we kind of have the luxury of of time and, and space to do what we want. Uh, but usually we try to cut it live in the studio and get basic tracks and then kind of build off of that. Um, right. So, you know, drummers are playing at the same time, guitar, all, all that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to keep, keep that live feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, It sounds killer. So I mean, you guys are doing a great job. Well, yeah, it doesn't always work, but yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're lucky again. We have we have the we have the luxury of the time. So that's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, you said you were based in Florida too, right? Uh, I'm actually in Georgia. Georgia, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and then is this, is the studio in Florida or where is that? In Jacksonville, yeah, in Florida. Right. Because I just seen some some like minor footage of it, but it look, definitely looks like it's in the swamps. Is that also what it's called? Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> it, they call it Swamp Raga. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's right next to uh, not a swamp, but a, a creek. So there's there's some there's a lot of wildlife around. The occasional, yeah, yeah. <laughs> occasional alligator, you know. Yeah, I was gonna ask because I mean I never been to that part of U.S. and I love to go actually. How That's, is it? Uh, Ah, I gotta be careful what I say. It's interesting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, you know. It's right on the coast, uh, Atlantic Ocean, St. John's River, and it's 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 a beautiful, beautiful part of the world for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, have you seen? You said you've seen some alligators. Anything else? Oh yeah, there's alligators down there, and snapping turtles, and manatees, and there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. What's a snapping turtle? Are they poisonous? Uh no, but they they you don't want to get bit by one. They'll probably take off your hand. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> they look like uh, they look like mini dinosaurs, kind of. Damn. Yeah. What was that animal you said? Uh, uh, manatee. Yeah, what was that? Uh, it's a huge, uh, plant eating mammal. That you you should look them up. They're kind of like a floating. <laughs> they're like a big floating hippo kind of. Uh, they're very gentle, but they they just kind of hang out and eat grass. <laughs> so 
It's a different world down there. Right? It's, 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 it's another world. It's another world. But how close is that to Georgia? Then I mean, do you have to drive hours on end, or is it? Yeah, to- I mean, a, a lot of us are based out of Atlanta. That's about six hours away, um, right. kind of due north. Yeah, and then some of us are in New York and kind of all over the place. A couple guys in Texas, and it's, it's we're all spread out. Right, but that's that's the crazy thing with U.S. Like, you can drive for hours and hours on end. Obviously, you're still going to be in the US. That, that's what's so nice, I guess, with Europe is that you can go to another country in an hour. You know, true. <laughs> that, that's 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 a pretty nice thing about Europe. Actually. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. A, there's a lot. That we got a lot of space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so, have you? Do you guys usually tour all around Europe, or is it mainly a few countries in Europe? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, most the majority of what we do is is in the U.S. Uh, and then every other year we've tried to go to Europe and or um, Japan, Australia, kind of leapfrogging like that. Uh, but when we go to Europe, it's mostly uh, kind of France, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark. Um, we, we don't really get into Spain and Italy, sadly, but, um, you know, just kind of go, go where the uh, go where the, the people who know us are. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but so, what brought you to, to music in the first place? Like, I know you, did you also have a degree at, at the university? Is it Harvard? No. Or is that yeah. getting like, mm-hmm. yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did I, that I whole stu- journey come about? And- uh, well, I, I studied uh, American literature there, um, but I had always done music since I was a kid. Um, I didn't really do it in college, but uh, I, I was raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so at, when I graduated, I went back there and just started playing in bands and uh, had an opportunity to do some teaching in New York City. And so basically brought my band with me and uh, we kind of just got into it there. Um, and uh, and that's how I had that happy accident of meeting up with Derek. And, you know, right. here here we are. <laughs> <laughs> was that back in the 90s or before that? Yeah, mid, mid 90s. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's cool, man. Uh, so, how, I mean, what got you into music in the first place? I mean, was it your, your, did your parents always play music at home or was it something you saw that just yeah, like Yeah, my, my, my mother was pretty musical. Um, she played piano and, and sang in, in a choir. Um, but uh, for me, it was just something I just kind of did. And, and she she was smart enough to kind of, catch on that I had a knack and so she started me with piano lessons and I, I ended up playing string bass uh in, in a chamber group for many years uh and she, she always tells the story about how I was singing along to a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial <laughs> when I was about three years old but I was singing a harmony that wasn't in the song and she's like that's interesting um and so she was she was very good about enabling you know, my interest in music. Mm, cool. So what was that Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. But I do know it was Kentucky Fried Chicken, though. But I'll have right. to look it up. I'm sure it's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. But so how, how's Minnesota like to grow up? And that, that's where you grew up, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it was interesting. Uh, you know, uh, it's very cold and, uh, everybody plays hockey. Me, me and, people. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it was, a, it was a good time to, to come of age there because there was a lot going on musically. You know, Prince was just coming up in the late eighties oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, um, and there was a whole other scene, um, which would become like alternative music basically, but like the replacements and Husker do and, um, uh, all these, all these different bands who uh, kind of put us on the map, um, and so that was all happening at the same time. Um, so it was, it was a, it was a great time to be a kid, be a teenager, and just kind of soak up the music. There was just so much happening. Mm. That's cool with Prince. I didn't make that connection that that's where he was. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, so that's where Paisley Park is still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Minneapolis. Yep, that Minneapolis sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But where is Minneapolis on the map again in the U.S.? Is it's, it's north then, or very very north, right in the middle? Uh, it's uh, kind of at the where the Mississippi River begins. Um, we're about seven hours west of Chicago, um, right. and it's kind of the last city before you hit the Dakotas and Seattle. There's nothing else kind of right, between right. there. Right. 
I probably shouldn't say that, but that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, how how did you get to to live in in Georgia now? Then, what was the? So did, did you stay in New York for a while, and then? Uh, I was in I was in New York for about eight years, and then uh, after I joined Derek's band, they were basically based in Atlanta, and that was kind of just the the natural move. So I, I moved to Atlanta, and that's where I met my wife, and and so we we live just outside of Atlanta now. Mm, nice. I mean, yeah, that's that's supposed to be a great city or whatever you want to call it. No, it's not a town, but yeah, city, right? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a big city. It's it's interesting. It's a it's an interesting place. You know, growing up in the north, basically, I had never, I didn't have much experience with the American South, and so it's been interesting to live in in the South. It's a it's a fascinating part of the country. It's 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 very different. Yeah, I mean, in which way have you experienced experienced it being different? Uh, I think it's just musical. Musically, it's it's different. I mean, there uh, there's a different kind of understanding and appreciation of music in the American South than maybe in the North. And I mean, that's blanket generalization, but but I think it's true. Um, there's just a uh, just more of a connection, I think, musically than anything. Um, and music is just kind of in the air, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, politically, it's a whole other thing. It's very uh, yeah. cons- conservative in a way. But then when you go out and play music, it is, uh, the, the crowds really get it and they really appreciate it. They are not very conservative <laughs> in their appreciation. So uh, it's it's an interesting, uh, interesting paradox. Yeah, because that's also been something I've been thinking about recently is like, you know, obviously, that like you say, the music, like you say, is in the air. But it's also like the food is so rich from from different cultures. But then, mm-hmm. like you said, the 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 political climate has always been very conservative. Mm-hmm. So to me, I, yeah, it's sort of weird in a way that it like the food and the music is very non-conservative. But then yeah. it's yeah, I don't really. Yeah, they must make a sort of funny mixture, I guess. It's, there's there's a lot of paradoxes in the American South. Yeah, if if you dig into William Faulkner was pretty much right about everything. <laughs> if you if you if you if you read his uh, his masterworks, that'll give you a good sense of what's going on down here. <laughs> oh yeah, what did he say? Uh, well, <laughs> he says a lot. <laughs> uh, it's just it. I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is it, what. And what he writes about quite a bit is there are just these these paradoxes and these these beautiful things and these very negative things and uh, they kind of ex- coexist and it's a it's a there's an odd tension uh, and uh, it is is not it hasn't gone away it's still here right right and I might be completely wrong now but obviously with George Floyd did that take place in Georgia am I completely wrong here. That was in Minneapolis, actually. That was uh, that was, was I know that I was about Georgia. Yeah, that no, that was the neighborhood I grew up in, actually, where they wow. killed him. Yeah, so that was uh, tough to watch yeah. last last spring, and it was tough to watch this trial. But um, I'm glad they came up with the verdict that they did. Yeah, definitely. That was just was it two days ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the outcome. That is the most logical outcome, but. That's also the crazy thing about U.S. You, sometimes being in, um, from Europe, I guess, and being a non-U.S. citizen is like you look at things like that and not just that, but many other situations. It's like, you know, what is the common sense? You cannot always, always um, expect to happen. No, America does is you can't rely on common sense here. <laughs> that would be that would be a grave mistake. <laughs> but uh, but I'm glad it, it worked out like it did. Uh, I would I would have just have hated to see my, my hometown burn down again. Um, and I think that's what would have happened if they found him not guilty. So uh, yeah. it was the right, it was the right thing to do. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I'm glad that was the outcome. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's a uh, U.S. is a fascinating place, but yeah, also yeah. I mean, I don't know really how to describe U.S. Maybe I need to read what the that Faulkner guy said about the South. Maybe that encapsulates the whole country. <laughs> I think it, I think it's true. We're uh, we're an interesting place. There's a, there's a lot of um, beauty and 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 energy and mm. 
you know, things like that. But then we're also very, uh, I guess the word would be immature. We're still kind of a, a culture that's, uh, needs to come to grips with itself. And we're not, we're not great. We're not the most self-reflective nation on the planet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. But, I mean cause it's, it's one of the most beautiful countries I've been to at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and like, just, I mean, I've been mostly in the, in, in the West, like mm -hmm. California sure. and around there. And when you see it, it's just like stunning, you know, like it's, yeah. it's completely stunning, stunning. Then, yeah, it's it's so fascinating. Like I like to to go back more and explore the country even deeper because. Oh yeah, yeah. the na the natural beauty is it's uh, it's unreal. Yep. Yeah. We're 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 very lucky. We'll just we'll see if we can hang on to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You never know. I guess. <laughs> yeah. but what's your favorite place in in the U.S.? Like, what's the most beautiful place you you've seen? Ah, uh, gosh. I mean. Um, it's also so various. I mean, I, I think one of the most unique, uniquely American places is New Orleans. Um, right. There's just there's just nothing like it on planet Earth, in in terms of where it's situated and and the culture and the music and the the food. It's just it's one of my favorite places on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love to go there, man. I like because um, I'm really into like uh, gumbo, jambalaya, everything they would have to offer. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and then, and again, music is just in. It's just kind of embedded in the fabric of everyday life. It's just in the air. It's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I love to go, man. Yeah. Uh, but going back to you know being a songwriter, um, how like if, if you're writing a song or you're working on an album and and you find yourself being stuck with a piece of music, how, how do you how do you get unstuck? Uh, that's a good question. I, I I think what happens usually with me is I, I'm lucky that I have a, some great people I can collaborate with, whether it's Derek and Susan or uh, my, my friends in Scrapmatic, Dave Yoke and Paul Olson. So, I mean, I, I we have enough trust where we can bounce stuff off each other and, and you know, give each other input. Um, but for me, when I'm writing, I'm mostly it's kind of like a, a puzzle that I'm playing at just in my day to day life. And so it's just a matter of being patient and sitting with something and, and you're kind of just always working on it, even when you're not consciously working on it, something's kind of happening. Um, so usually it kind of works itself out. But again, I'm, I'm lucky I've got people I trust who I can just be like, here it is, finish it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But if someone asks you to finish something, what's your approach then? Uh, that happens sometimes, and, and sometimes I, I can help, and sometimes I can't. You know, some, sometimes I get what's going on, and sometimes it just eludes me. You know, so but but I always try to be, you know, as as helpful as I can, and and never discouraging because it's a it's a vulnerable place to give people something that you're making up. It's it's a very odd. It's a weird thing to do, <laughs> and uh, and and if it, you know if somebody says something kind of dismissive or something, it can really it can really hurt. So I always try to be as supportive as possible, uh, and hope I get that you know in return. Yeah, makes all the sense. Yeah. But so yeah, you, you mentioned patience, you know, with 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 your songwriting. So what you do write is that you don't try to like I gotta sit. I sit with this until something comes out. Do you, you feel comfortable stepping away, so to speak? I do. Yeah. I mean, luckily we're rarely ever writing under like a deadline or anything. So it's really, it's really just about getting the best possible outcome and the best result. Uh, and if that takes time and if it's just not happening, I just, I don't force it, you know? Uh, but I also don't throw things away. So I'll, I'll come back and revisit things that I've been working on years ago. Um, just cause you never know, when inspiration will strike you, or you never know where you'll, you'll be in your life or in your mindset. Um, so I try not to just flush things down the toilet. You know, I just keep, keep them around just in case they might uh, they might be future partners in songwriting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Do you use um, also a lot the, the iPhone? What's it called? Voice memo. I do. Yeah. When, <laughs> I, when I'm driving around a lot, I'll record stuff that if something comes to me, you know, or yeah, in the middle yeah. of the night or yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> probably one of the best apps they have. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's the rest can, you know, are useless, <laughs> but, but I definitely yeah. use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, what, what do you mainly write on? Because I know you play guitar. You said you you play some bass. But what do you have a main instrument, or is it? Uh, it's usually guitar uh, because I'm not very good at it, um, and so it's it's a good tool to kind of get get out of my head um, because I'm I don't have a lot of facility with it, if, if that makes right. sense. Uh, kind of gets me out of my comfort zone. Occasionally, I'll write on a piano, but but usually it's it's guitar. Right. What got you into to picking the guitar as as an instrument? Having, I mean, was it because you were into bass or? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I didn't. I mean, I always messed around with guitar a little bit, but I, I didn't really have one. Uh, Derek actually gave me a guitar about sixteen or seventeen years ago, and um, he ended up going on tour with um, Eric Clapton, and um, and so we were kind of on hiatus for about a year, and I was like, well. I guess I should learn how to use this thing. <laughs> so I, that was that was kind of my guitar year. I kind of found my way around it and uh, and realized I could use it as a as a tool to do some writing too. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, perfect, man. But so was it like when you played in the Derek Trucks band? Was it mainly uh, Derek bringing you pieces of music that you wrote vocals to, or was it? <laughs> well, yeah, mostly. Uh, Kofi did a lot of the writing. Um, and then a lot of material would come from just messing around during sound checks and just jamming, um, yeah, and, cool. and just remembering stuff, you know, just kind of group improvisation. Um, but yeah, that, that was mostly how it, and then I would, I, I contributed quite a few lyrics and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because you mentioned, you know, uh, improvisation and, 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 uh, jamming and stuff. So when I've seen you guys and also just hearing your records and stuff, the whole band is in is so in tune with what with what's going on. Like is is that is that um rehearsed I don't think it's rehearsed before, but are there any obvious cues that are decided beforehand or is it just that everyone uh, is just so in tune with what's going on? Uh well, you know, because it is kind of improvisatory or improvisation based, you just you have to be paying attention. Like you have to be in the moment um and and then uh, we don't really have a lot of planned out things but over the years you kind of pick up on on derek's body language so you kind of know oh, yeah. what's going on um but yeah you got to have a lot of eye contact and and you can't just you can't just start daydreaming because you never know what's going to happen you got to be <laughs> you got to be in it yeah yeah that is that, that, that's something you guys do extremely well oh really thank you Cool. So what's I mean, what's uh, Derek's body language? Because I mean, obviously he, he's that's also the very um, uh, fascinating thing about Derek is he's he's very calm person on stage, but everything is happening through the guitar. So mm -hmm. being an audience member, I've never seen what's his what's the cues he's looking for. Like uh, he's just looking back, or yeah, it's pretty subtle. It's like it could be a head nod, it could be uh, a little tip of the guitar neck and uh you know or or a, or a shake of the head or a nod of the head or you know it's it's pretty subtle but i've it's, that's funny i've never really defined it i just kind of know i know it when i see it <laughs> yeah yeah that's the best way i guess yeah. <laughs> um but something i've been hearing a lot about recently in my recent interviews this week something that's come up a lot is the the importance of having your own voice like finding your own voice um whether that's as a as a band as you guys or maybe your own voice you know you being a singer stuff um yeah. how have you developed that aspect of your of your let's say singer voice in this case just your uh, expression i guess I should yeah call it that. well th that's a good question and i i, I um you know, I, th I think anybody who, whether they're a singer or play an instrument, you you, you have to find your own voice. And um, I think it begins with with mimicry. And and I was lucky after uh, in college, I really took an interest in jazz and um, and jazz singing. And uh, I, I lived in uh, Budapest, Hungary for a year playing in a jazz cool. band. And I had to just learn literally hundreds of jazz standards and just kind of figure out. The, the, the cool part about jazz 
singing is you're you're interpreting these songs. So um, it, it wasn't necessarily the improvisatory stuff, but it was just crooning, you know. But uh, but I think in in figuring out how to say what I wanted to say within the lyrics of these classic songs was a, was a good way of figuring out how I operated and how my voice operated. Um, and so that was a good, that was a good school, um, a, a good education in, in figuring out how to, how to operate in this territory that's been so well trod, uh, but, but how do you bring something new to it? Um, so that was a good, that was a good challenge. And then um, the rest of it is just who inspires you, who moves you, and you you rip them off until until you kind of work through them, and you find the next person. You rip them off until you work through it, and you kind of come <laughs> at the end of it. You kind of come to your, yourself, hopefully. Mm. Yeah. That's very but true. It, yeah. yeah, but it is it is about being inspired and moved and and imitation, you know, for 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 the first part, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so who, who, who's been the, the person or artist who, who you have tried to imitate? Oh, God. I mean, uh, a lot of great blues guys. Um, uh, Bobby Bland. Um, uh, gosh, uh, Taj Mahal. Uh, who are some other people I really like? Um, Etta James. Um, and then, you know, other more uh, artists that aren't just from the blues world, like Tom Waits, is a, I'm a big fan of his. And uh, gosh, I don't know, I could go on forever. But Howlin' Wolf is, is one of my, he's in my firmament. <laughs> right. I need to check him out. Uh, more deeply because I, I'm I'm familiar with him, but I I couldn't say I know his music well. He uh, he has one of the most unique voices in in American music. I think um, yeah. it's just there's nothing like it. Yeah. Which record do you recommend checking out first of his? Uh, I just get the real folk blues. It's the, put out by Chess. It's kind of kind of his greatest hits. Um, but yeah, you. you it's so distinctive. There's just, there's nothing like it on planet earth. That's uh, he's, he's one for the ages. Cool. I am going to check them out. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but so how, how was um, living in Budapest? When, when, when was that then? in the eighties or nineties? Uh, early nineties. Yeah. What was the vibe then? Uh, I mean, that was a, uh, so close to Russia too. It was, it was interesting because the Russians had just pulled out. Um, and so it was not like it is today. It was very, battered and you know there's still machine gun strapings in the buildings from world war ii and from the 56 revolution and it was just kind of wide open it was just a it was just a new world and uh, i think even the hungarians didn't quite know what to do like it was just such a strange time uh but we're lucky because there are a lot of people who are very hungry for western culture and western music and stuff like that so there were great great audience for for playing jazz and, and american music nice didn't frank zappa become like some sort of a ambassador to it was a, some country in eastern europe i don't know if it was czechoslovakia or something around I the think same it time been. yeah yeah, yeah. I think it been czechoslovakia. <laughs> yeah yeah it was just it was the it was a very strange time and now you know now if you go to budapest it's very it's very very much like western europe but at the time it was just it was bizarre world. It was <laughs> highly entertaining. I can imagine. I mean, it's so funny that they were, you know, looking for jazz, but I guess they've been maybe so deprived for so long, unfortunately. I, I think so. They just had no real window into the West and how things worked. And so they were, it was just, this jazz was just fascinating to them. Um, yeah. But how how come you 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 moved there? Like, what, what was the opportunity that came about? Uh, I had a friend uh, who had moved there and was uh, doing different things, but he was also playing music. and And I went over to visit him, and he's just like, "If you're not doing anything, just come over here and play in our band." And I was like, "Yeah, I guess I'm not doing anything." So I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was much younger then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's so cool, man. I mean, because. It seems hard to get those experiences these days because everything is so 
connected with the you know internet and whatnot. But th- back then it was real, like completely new world, I guess. It it really was, yeah. And uh, and I'm, I'm I'm lucky I got to see it and uh, and see how things change for for better and and, and for the worse. Um, but it was it was just a fascinating time in history, and I'm 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 lucky that I I had the opportunity to do it. Yeah. So how long were you there for a year or something? Just about a year, yeah. And then you know, I mean, I a lot of some of my friends who were there stayed, uh, but I realized I probably didn't have a lot of. The, my future was probably brighter back in America than. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, no offense to 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 the but yeah. <laughs> none, none taken. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Um, but so. You move, move back to U.S. Is is that when you start studying at Harvard then, or did you do that before? No, that that was before. Um, right. And then when I moved back to Minneapolis and started working at a newspaper and uh, played in different bands and stuff. You know. hmm. So you still. So what what did you study again? Was the literature? Was that Amer- American literature? Yeah. So is that something you still practice to this day, like writing? Very much so, yeah. I actually, um, I just finished writing a, a manuscript of a book that's going to come out this year, I think, um, about uh, about poetry and, and rock and roll, basically. Nice. Um, and I, I co-wrote it with a friend of mine who teaches at the Catholic University in Washington, D.C. Um, so that'll come out, I think, next fall, I hope. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I still stay stay busy trying to nice. think about think about stuff. <laughs> But so how does, um, like being a writer and also a musician and write music, how how does, because um, I mean, I don't have any experience writing books or anything like that, but that feels like a, uh, an art form where you need to be very disciplined, like something you need to just practice every day, like sit down to write. Is that how you work too? or? Uh, well, again, I'm lucky that I have a collaborator <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> to, to right. kind of keep me on track and keep me on timeline. Um, if left to my own devices, I probably, again, wouldn't be very disciplined about it. Uh, right. So it's good to it's good to just sign people up so they crack the whip and make you do do stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, man. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very very beneficial to be accountable, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So do you have a title for the book? Uh, yeah, it's called a poetic song verse, uh, blues based music and poetry. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Would that be available out. worldwide, or it should? Yeah, it'll be on University of Miss, um, Mississippi University Press, um, and I think it should come out this fall. I'm not sure. I should probably know that, but yeah. We will stay tuned, you know, for some updates. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Please. Yeah. Yeah. But awesome, Mike. So this year we have the book coming up. Uh, is a new record with Eric Trucks, uh, the Disco Trucks Band, coming out too? Hopefully, I don't know. The timeline on those things are so strange, but um, we'll, we'll be done recording it hopefully uh, this summer. But um, I'm not sure when it would come out. I would imagine maybe late this year or early next year. Yeah, so you can probably start touring, I guess. Probably. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so, how is that whole? Obviously, pandemic's been awful for everyone, but. Yeah. I know, and I know, like Susan and, and Derek have had these fire things going on. Mm-hmm. Have you been? Have you been a part of those at all? Or? I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, cool. Yeah, yeah. We, did, we did that at, uh, at, at, at a, their farm up in uh, Georgia. Um, they 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 kind of mixed and matched the band. They did it as a duo, and then as a quartet, and then as a, as a six piece. Uh, mm-hmm. And we're, and I think we're going to take that on the road a little bit this summer. Uh, not the full band, but just a six piece and, and, and try to start doing some socially distant shows and things like that. Nice. So that would be cool. Yeah. It's, it's time to get back to work. So yeah, yeah. It must be, you guys must be itching to get out there. Yeah. I think everybody's a little stir crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad to see you as you guys are doing very well vaccinating people. Yeah, some states better than others, but uh, I think right. most <laughs> I think most of the band has finally gotten all their shots, so we'll be we'll be right, good cool. to go. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Well, it sounds exciting, and yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys back in the UK maybe next year or so. Yeah, I yeah. hope so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, thank you, Mike, again for taking your time. I really oh, thank it. you. I I appreciate it. It was fun talking to you. Awesome. 
Thank you, Mike, for coming on to the show. It was a real pleasure talking to you. And I hope you, the listener and watcher, enjoyed this conversation as well. Um, please, before you leave, hit subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, if listening on Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, please subscribe there too. Feel free to leave a review as well. Um, but that's it for this week. Real pleasure having you on. Uh, or p- real pleasure having you watching or listening and real pleasure having Mike on um, but yeah again that's it for this week I will see you guys next week again so take care and see you soon